1840 and 1842 had a baby. Yes, I've got... Good morning, it's Tuesday. It's a little after seven. Roxy and I are taking a ride to the vet's office. Um, she's kind of got a icky eyeball that just, it's yucky, so we're just gonna go get it looked at. And uh, she needs a rabies shot anyway, so making one swoop at one time. Um, the video I uploaded today is kind of a hodgepodge of things, and I just realized it, like we, we went from being in corn silage or not corn silage, but like we tested the corn silage and then we went and um, failed. Jason had problems with the MoCo. There's a bolt in there that's broken and he needs to just take time to fix, fix it, not just band-aid it. But such as farming, sometimes you just have to band-aid things to, to make it all work right. Uh, anywho, we are going to be bailing again today quite a bit. Actually, when I get back, that's why we're going so early this morning. Um, and then we have football tonight. We have a football game, so lots of moving parts. Uh, Jason actually finished up bailing for me yesterday. I had to take both kids to practice, so right now it's just kind of how it is. I start a project and then he has to finish it. Ultimate teamwork, right? So we're going to run to the vet and I will pick you guys back up when we get home. You're a mess. Yeah, you're a mess. Yes. we make you feel better. Yes. You can make you feel better. All 26 pounds of you. I actually had to slow it down to 3.1 miles per hour. I actually got into some decent wind rows. I've been cruising along at like 6. Don't need a speeding ticket today.
Jason flew up the drone. We're in some pretty good hay, surprisingly, for second cut. I've actually had to back it back down to 2B, which puts you at like 3.1 miles per hour. I don't need a speeding ticket. We don't have time for a speeding ticket, so just gonna nip that in the butt right there. I've kind of just been blessed with videoing um, the last few days. Well, actually probably the last couple weeks. Um, I'm just tired, tired, and we just had a lot of stuff going on. But in the meantime, Excuse me, you're tired. Uh, but with all that, with that being said. Video save if I didn't push stop, like record. So fun fact, it will save video if you even just turn it off without like saying stop record. But it was funny that Jason panicked about his videoing skills. So this 1842S is just like your 1840 size wise, like the bail size. You're still making the 12 by 14 bail. However, this baler is heavy duty. It's made for the commercial guy who's bailing 25,000 plus, okay? This is one of the reasons we have this lovely camera here because it will catch by ties. So, bail tied, not bail tied, bail issue. Um, Jason's going to come over here and see what's going on and maybe talk to you guys about it because I've got all kinds of string. Two knots. Mine doesn't have a handy dandy magnet, does it, like yours?
Probably a half inch. inch. So yes, my hood is up because Jason is back there trying to figure out what's going on with my daughter. It's, it's always my left side, always, that I've been having some problems with. So, he thinks he got to fixed. He told me it was me, but it's really not. Okay, so what I showed you was that he was adjusting the bail hook and really what needed to be done is he had to um, adjust the twine um, box tension. You want that kind of pulled tight, not so tight it's like won't feed, but then you don't want it so loose and that was what was happening. It was getting too loose and then it wasn't feeding right. Um, but I can't do that from the tractor. Like one of us has to be able to be bailing so that the other person can see it and that's just how it is sometimes like but um we really have been happy with the 1842s now i've gotten some questions because the 1842 has been out like that's been a long time baler it's a 16 by 18 baler um uh, whereas mine is a 14 by 18 bale just like the 1840 is okay so the only difference between the 1840 and the 1842 is that it's a 14 to a 16 by 18 bale. I don't know, is it three string? I think it's three string. Um, mine is only two string, and so is the 42S. So think about it this way, is if the 1840 and the 1842 had a baby, it made the 1842S. That's how I've been thinking about it. Um, never be afraid to reach out to us via email, um, Instagram, Facebook. If I can answer a question, I definitely will. If I can't, I will hunt down the boss man. Uh, so if you have questions regarding this baler or the 1840, even the Norton system that we run or the tractors, we'll, we'll be glad to chat. I, I talk all the time. You guys should be used to that by now. try to cruise through this. I don't know if you guys can see. 6.3. Like I said, cruising. Because Jason's loading over there and uh, I've got roughly an hour and a half left to finish up. This year's 
just been a little bit different in general with the drought we've had. Um, we are very blessed, so I'm not going to complain about the lack of rain uh, because we still have fields, we still have grass, we just don't have the normal like abundance of grass that we typically have. Like our windrows should be not um, as small as they are. I must have hit a button because my screen's doing weird stuff. I've had a lot of things like just rack in my brain today that like has been inside my head and I really haven't videoed a lot of it because um, some of it is just like how I feel about the Baylor, how I feel about hay season. Um, I kind of want to just do a live and talk about the different things, you know, the difference between the 1840 and the 1842S. Obviously there is an 1842 out there. Um, the 42S is the 14 by 18, just like your 1840 is. I'm not here to sell you a baler. I'm not a Massey Ferguson dealer. What I am is a producer. I am a hay producer that is here day in and day out, baling for, from May till October, almost every day. If we're not in the fields, every, you know, baling, we're, you know, mowing, raking, hauling, delivering, in some aspect, we're doing some sort of hay almost every day. So with that being said, I thought about doing a live, but I'll kind of chit chat a little bit more through this. I am going 6.3. I'm cruising right through this second cut. This 1842 has a bigger chamber. It also has a two stuffer fork. So you're able to take in more. You're gonna have the same amount of hay regardless of what baler you have at the end of the day, but it's all about time efficiency. I'm a mom, not just a wife, not just a hay producer. Um, I'm a content creator on top of everything else. I, you know, I love to ride and train horses. We have the cows, all these different things. So at the end of the day, it's time efficiency. How much more can I do with what I have, but do it in a more time efficient manner? And that's what the 1842S does. It's, it's pushing you a little bit faster. You're able to do, I would say almost the 20% more capacity a day. So like, if you're not starting, failing and you're only running at one or two miles per hour you know it's a lot different than if you're running in like the three four range like what I've been doing granted this summer has been a little bit different because we haven't had the hay wind rows that we typically have but there's also a consideration what if next year we do have the mass production of hay that we typically do and I need that bigger chamber longer chamber to get the job done um, I really wish we had some better hay to really deep dive into that, but I, I can't control that. I can't control the weather any more than you can um, as a producer, regardless of what you're producing. So um, if you're looking to get an 1840 or an 1842S, please feel free to reach out. Jason and I will chit chat with you guys about it. Um, we'll give you guys our honest thoughts, um, which has been mostly throughout this whole summer. Um, Jason was a little bit concerned when we first picked it up about the downturn augers or something about the augers and now it, we've re realized why they are like the way they are and it has been beneficial for us. I'm not slugging this baler like typical. I'm not breaking the shear bolts because the baler is just built heavy duty. It is. It truly is built for a commercial style person. And that's what we are. When you're bailing 20,000 small squares in a year, it's a little rough there. Sorry guys, probably hit you against the window. You guys gotta be making yourself um, time efficient. You're only one person. Um, you might have a crew. I, I don't know your eyes' circumstances. You guys obviously know ours. It's Jason and I, you know, his parents occasionally help. My dad helps um, with silage as needed. Keaton is getting to that point where he's starting to take on just a little bit more of the responsibility. But at the end of the day, it's Jason and I, and that's what works best for us. Um, I love what I do. Six years ago, this is not what I was doing. I was not in a tractor 24 seven. I worked in an office. I took care of the kids. I brought field meals. 
Like that was my job as a true farm wife. Um, I would help on the weekends to give the hired hands a break. They had the tractor ready, the baler ready. They would have everything lined out. And all I had to do was get in when it was all ready to go. I didn't, I didn't do anything essentially that I'm doing now. I never mowed until the fall of 2019. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier, this is completely off topic, but it, it, this is like sparking the fuel to my fire here. Uh, I was talking to somebody on a conference call earlier about some, like a big project I'm putting together for 2024 that has weighed on my heart like for years and I'm just finally like biting the bullet and we're going to do it. Oh gosh, I don't know what I just hit. I hit a button. It's hard to say. Um, come on, Kayla, focus, focus. But if you guys want to do something and change your life set and your mindset, you've got to figure out what makes you happy. Like, I was happy in an office for so long until that office didn't bring me joy. I didn't serve the way I wanted to be do like, serve in a way that made me happy. Um, I don't know if I'm still serving in a way that makes me happy, but I'm in a tractor office. Like, how much better does this get? Like, I love my office now. I mean, it's a little dirty and she kind of gets a little temperamental every now and then, depending on who's in here. But I got a puppy at my feet, you know, open skies. I have, an, um, like, the Cadillac of tractors this year. Um, but besides that, like, you just got to follow your passion and one of the things that has always been important to me has been that if you want to change your life and your mindset, you can. You don't have to stay stuck in whatever career you're doing. Just find your niche. Jason was very lucky to find his niche at an early age, <laughs> um, more or less because he knew he couldn't farm in the, the standard set of a row crop guy. You kind of have to marry into it or be born into it. And he was either one of them so oh man Kayla dirty windshield dirty windshield anyway with all that rambling I am going to probably be doing a live um, I don't know if it'll happen next week when my birthday hits on the 25th if you're paying attention um, or if it will actually wait until after hay season and we can kind of give you guys a full kind of review on the massy equipment that we ran around this summer, um, including the 5S 145 tractor, the 662 rake, which was our very first rotary rake. And I think for the most part, we liked it. We had a little bit of tweaking um, that we had to learn a learning curve with the alfalfa. We still have fourth cut alfalfa to do, so we'll be able to really kind of hopefully play with the rake during that whole about alfalfa. We had um, a brand new Coons, well they're not Coons now, a brand new Norton AE15 sent out for us and you guys nothing was wrong with our accumulator. She was just a little bit old and the good people at Norton wanted us to look snazzy with this outfit and we truly appreciate Carlene and her whole family. Like I said, we have ran the accumulator since 2014. So it's been an essential part of our day-to-day -day basis and our operation for years. One of the things I really do miss from having, um, we didn't have it in there last year, I don't think, because it stopped working. Maybe we did. I can't remember. I had a stroke counter, and I'd had it for years, like years. Um, it also had the moisture tester on it, but it stopped working too. I miss having that bail counter. I miss it. Um, it's something that I kind of verbally told Massey as well, um, that I think the baler needs to have, this baler needs to have some sort of monitor with it. But like right now, I just mentally did the math. Like Jason and his dad came and got a load. So they took two loads back. So my truck holds 450, Jason holds 495. So let's see, that's nine, 945 
bales and that's not counting this back here what I've been so um, I would say it's gonna be like maybe close to 1100 today just roughly um, I don't know how many bales are even on the baler hmm it's a good good thought process we'll check that out when we get out tonight see how many we put on this one I know I took pictures of what the 1840 had on it when we swapped over at wheat harvest because we put this girl right to work when we brought her home that night did you guys catch that video if not go watch it there it's a midnight swap out literally we were up at midnight swapping bailers out to go again the next morning at like 8 a.m 